All right, so we're back for episode four, and we're gonna go over some of the real key things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to get the most out of the paint shop. So let's go ahead and get into this one. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna talk about today is having a system. And that's very, very key to uh, being productive in a paint shop. You wanna get a system, and you wanna stick to that system, that way you can get better at it day to day. So if you do things you know, differently from time to time and then you change this and then you do that, you don't really get better at it because you're changing it. You wanna to stick to one way that you do something and just get better and faster at it. And that's what I've done through the years. I like to stick to one way of doing things and I like to do it the right way and uh, that'll definitely make you better at it. So first thing we're gonna talk about today is your uh, prep cart and you guys know that I'm using the fest tool and I had a video a while back on my uh, prep cart and having everything organized on your cart that way you can roll right over to the job and prep out that car so the last thing you want to do is be running around going and getting sandpaper and looking for stuff when you're prepping these cars out you want to take your cart if you have a uh, fest tool cart or you have just a regular cart, you wanna go ahead and get it right over to where you're gonna be working. That way you're not looking for nothing and you're staying close to that car because the more you have to run around getting stuff, you're losing time doing that. And that's why a lot of businesses have things close by in uh, high production environments. They'll have everything in a close area that you can get to quick because you alleviate time by having to not run to get stuff. So make sure you have your prep cart set up and make sure you have everything on it that you need close at hand to do the job. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get a system on how you prep cars. So you guys know in all my videos, I prep them the same way and that's how I have my cart set up. So set your cart up for what you use on a day-to-day -day basis. And the grits that I'm using is 400, 600, and 800. Those are the only three grits that I use when I'm prepping out cars. And then I have my scuff pads. I use the gray and the red and then I got my block paper. So those are the key items that I use all day long and I keep them on this cart here and I roll right over to the job and uh, get it prepped out. So set up your cart and get a system. They're very, very important to getting faster and better at what you do. So we're gonna talk about the next one here and that's gonna be your booth. You guys know we have a double wide booth and uh, depending on what kind of setup you guys have, whether you have a drive-through booth or just a single booth, you wanna get a system on how you're gonna get these cars in the booth and out of the booth. So this one here, this booth was designed to have double wide doors on the sides of this because we do a lot of stuff apart and we paint parts you know, off the vehicle. So we'll prep them out over here and then these doors we can open up and almost load them like a drive-through, but being that it's parts, they go right through here because these are double doors. So in your shop, figure out a system on how to get the cars in and out of the booth. That way they're not in the way of where you're going. So this door here opens up and then we can put our parts over here in our area here where we leave them for the body men to uh, pick up and build their cars. So that's our system that we do here. If we have a vehicle, we run it in through the front, but we, we do a lot of parts. So that's the way we like to do it. It's the most efficient way to paint a car. So let's go back to uh, our other area and I'll show you the next thing. All right, so also when you're talking about your booth, you wanna get a system on how much you wanna get done for yourself. So I have a, a goal that I set every day on how much I'm gonna get through these booths. So in order to do that here, I have a double wide booth. So I'm able to do two jobs or even multiple jobs if they're taken apart in this booth. So you guys know if you followed the channel for a while, I started off in a regular drive in, drive out, one car booth and I was still doing the same amount of hours that I'm doing here at this shop. It was just, you have to change the ways you do it in order to uh, achieve the same goal. So I had to do four loads at that first shop in order to get the number that I wanted to do. So now I'm able to do two big loads or even three loads depending on the jobs. And you guys know that each job fluctuates. Sometimes you get good jobs, sometimes you get a bad job. So you try to do the most out of each cycle in the booth. So don't think because you have a one car booth, you're not gonna be able to turn those hours. I was able to do the same amount of hours in this booth as I was in a one car booth. You just have to really get critical on your time 
and make sure you get in and out, prep them out, have one ready to go in and do four loads a day, which is equivalent to this one here. So it's always, you know, achievable, the goal that you have. And I know a lot of you guys probably work in shops with other guys, or maybe you're even on a team, but there's always a way to get to your goal if you're willing to change the way you do things. So I had a buddy of mine one time, he went to a new job and he was telling me he couldn't get in the booth, but only one or two times a day because he was sharing that booth with another guy. So I said, well, what time does he come in in the morning? And he told me he came in at about eight. So I said, well, get there at six and get one done before he gets there, then let him do his. And, and then this guy was one of the guys that likes to go to lunch. So. I told him, shoot another one at lunchtime. Just talk to him, say, hey, listen, I'm gonna do one before you get here and one at lunchtime, and then maybe even do one more once he leaves. So if you get you know, familiar with the people you're working with and you guys you know, talk it out, you can always get to your goal. You might have to do things you don't want to, but that's the way life is. So I was always willing to do things others wouldn't do, and uh, it was always able to be achieved what I was looking for. So. It's not gonna be easy, and uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's definitely not an easy task to do when you're working with other people in a shop. I've done it for many years with other guys, and I was always able to get what I needed by just talking with them and going over it with them. All right, so the next thing you gotta do when you're gonna be efficient in a paint shop is paint cars one time. So the last thing you wanna do is have redos when you're doing painting. And in order to not have redos, you have to get your stuff dialed in. So you wanna make sure that you check your colors. You wanna make sure that you build a library of spray out cards and have everything ready. That way, when you go in that booth, you know you're gonna succeed. So the last thing that you wanna be doing as a painter is having redos and spending a lot of time in that booth. You wanna know when you go in that booth that you're gonna spray it. You got your color already checked out and you're gonna get in and out of there. That way you can get your next load inside the booth. So being efficient and having no redos and being up on your colors and you know being really into what you do on a day-to-day -day basis is gonna keep away all the redos and problems that most guys have that aren't really thinking about what they're doing ahead of time. Do your spray outs and uh, be ready so that when you get in that booth, you can just crank them out and get your next one uh, you know in there so all right so the next thing that goes along with being efficient and uh, making sure everything is gonna work out right is when you have your paint mixed label the can and label the line or whatever kind of paint system you're using because it really comes in handy because there's a lot of times you'll get the same colors in the shop and you can just go ahead and use stuff that you have on the bench here so we have everything marked capped and labeled with our paint codes on them of what we're gonna use because we'll be using these colors again and it's very familiar to be using the same colors quite often and with the Tesla there's only five colors so when I'm making the Tesla colors up I mark them, label them, put the variant because I will not have any waste when I'm doing the Teslas because I do so many of them so mark your paint and you'll be uh, amazed on how often it'll come in handy, especially if you have to touch something up later or if somebody scratches something, you have paint labeled and you have hopefully enough to do what you need to do and you don't have to mix more paint. So marking your lids is uh, helped me through the years, especially when they come back, if you gotta touch up bolts, you're not looking and searching for paint and giving them the wrong one. And uh, it just really does help out to mark the top of your, your paint lids with the paint code and the variant. So, so when you get really efficient with your booth and with your clear and everything that you're doing, you got everything dialed in, you're prepping your cars out, you got your system and you're getting faster, you're gonna wanna tweak every little thing that you, you do. So I worked at a shop one time where we were really pressed to get cars in and out of that booth because we had a team and we were prepping cars out fast so we wanted to get less bake time. So we were even checking out clear coats that had a less bake, but still had a nice look that we could save time through the day on just actually shortening the bake cycle. So once you get efficient and you get to that level, you're gonna wanna do all kinds of things to maximize the day. And once you can take time from bake cycles or mix and paint, prep time, and cut back on all that stuff, you'd be surprised on how much you can get out of the day 
by doing little odd jobs. So there we even staggered lunches. So somebody was always painting and someone would take a lunch at a staggered time. That way the, the shop never slowed down. So here I'm always staying busy. You guys know that I don't take a lunch. I only just eat quick and go right back to work. But having a car ready to go in the booth after this next one comes out is key. And that's why I like to use my lab coat. So I don't use a full paint suit because I don't want to have to climb in and out of that thing being that I'm doing all the prepping myself. So once I hit bake, I do my final tape and I know that that next car is ready to go in the booth or the next job or the next parts. Whatever it is that I'm doing, I make sure I have a load that's ready to go in that booth. So making things efficient and uh, getting things close by and having a system is key. So even little things like out here by the hose bib, I'll show you. So right around the corner here from the paint shop, is a hose bib and little stupid stuff like this you'd be surprised on how much it'll help you so i have a hose bib right here and out here i have my scuff it cleaner and i can scuff my bumpers out close by and get them cleaned up because you guys know we get a lot of dirty bumpers especially on a repair bumper and uh it's close by to me so i didn't know if you guys seen i drove in uh the old cutlass i haven't showed it to you guys on the channel in a while but i said you know what it's been sitting let's take it in and uh if you guys are new to the channel we sprayed this one and we did the house of colors brandy wine with a water base uh base coat underneath it so go back and check out those videos but we just drove them in to uh, get them out of the house but all right, so we've seen that a lot of things play a big part in the day. And to me, you also want to really take care of your work area and your booth. So you want to keep it clean. You don't want to have paper in the corners and tape all over the place because the area you work in is a reflection on you. So I like to keep my area clean and I don't like to have tape, paper and stuff balled up in corners in a booth because to me, it's, it's, it's kind of like an eyesore to me. So. If someone's coming through the shop and they want to check out the paint area and they see it nice and clean, even though the jobs coming out of that booth may be beautiful, it's still a reflection on you, the painter. And even though you don't want to think you're being judged for it, you are. So keep your area clean and neat and it'll definitely make you more valuable in a shop because the last thing the owner or the manager wants to do is take someone out here on a tour of a shop, you know, with stuff thrown all over the place and have it all, you know, dirty. So I like to keep my booth clean. And when I see something on the floor, I pick it up right away and get it thrown out. So tidy up your area because it's only going to get you more money in the end by keeping your area clean because it makes you look like a better, cleaner worker. All right, so back on the regards of the materials, you guys know we're here, we're using the 2021 Clear and all the paint companies and all the paint systems run reports on how much materials you use based off the sales at the shop, based off of the hours. So if you guys don't think that they're watching you, they are. So all the things that you're gonna do to cut down on redos and to get the most out of your clear coat is gonna make you look better to the owner and uh, definitely to the company or the manager. So I'm running right now with the clear that I'm using here at 98 hours per gallon. So that's a pretty good number. I was talking to the rep the other day and he was telling me that the numbers look good. So make sure you try not to have redos because even though you may not think they know about them, they do because they know everything in this business is so expensive now to not only the shop, but also the, the paint company that's buying it from the manufacturer that everyone has to keep you know notes on what's going through that shop and how much money they're making because the stuff is very expensive so make sure you don't have redos make sure you don't mix too much paint make sure you label your lids and use as much of the stuff you have laying around even if it's the wrong color as a ground coat and then go ahead and mix up some more color if you need to of the right shade so i've used that through the years if i have whites i'll save them i'll put down a coat of white and then I'll go ahead and mix up the color. That way I save on materials because all that stuff is gonna make you more valuable to the shop that you're at. Keep a close eye on your materials and try to be efficient. Don't mix too much clear, don't mix too much base and don't have redos. And it'll definitely make you more valuable to the shop.
All right, so this is gonna wrap up episode four and uh, we'll be doing episode five here in this week coming up. So stay tuned to it and we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>